All right, so this is the Calculus 2, 1.2, limits of function using properties of limits. So we're going to find all these things, okay? But we're going to go through and skim and talk about this as we go. So we have, okay, basic theorems, okay, for the limit right here, if f of x is equal to a, where a is constant, what does constant mean? Not changing, right? So, so does it does it have a variable? No, 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 no variable, right? So, like on our warm up today, that would be the plus one part of it, right? Yeah. Okay, there it is. It doesn't have a variable attached to it. It's constant. Okay. So, right here. Then, for any real number c, okay, limit as f of x approaches as x approaches c, the limit is actually equal to the number of what we have. So, it is going to be that number. Okay. So, next one here. Uh, for any number, uh, f of x equals x, any number. So right here, same thing, okay? It's just going to be equal to that number. So when c is that number, just plug in the c. That's all it means. Just plug it in, okay? Now, here's a whole bunch of other stuff. So if I'm adding two limits together, I could also separate those two limits. So if I had two separate things, like our warm-up today, which actually started off with 2, was it sine squared, right? Minus 3 yeah, sine, sine x, right? Yeah. And then the plus 1. Mm -hmm. We could separate that into three separate limits. So we could do the limits of each one. So that's what this is saying. So the limit of the whole thing here, okay, which I'm here. So the limit of the whole thing here could be broken up into parts of each one, okay? There we go. That's... Uh, that one. Okay. Of the difference. Difference works out the same thing. So if it is subtraction, I could break it up like that too and do the limits. So the limit of the differences of the two function equal to the differences of their limits. So you find the limit of each one and then put them together. That's what it says. Product. Okay. The limited one. Okay of the whole thing, product if there being multiplication. So I could actually go through and multiply those two to find the limit of that, or I could just break it up. The limit of this times the limit of this. Make sense? I could break that up instead of having one big problem, break it up to the different problems, and then multiply their limits together. All right, what do we got here? What's the limit equal to here? Nine? <laughs> this one's pretty easy, right? <laughs> Very good. <laughs> okay. Not trying to kill anyone yet. Okay. That, that's for next week. All right. What about the limit here? Uh, 20. Positive or negative? Positive. <laughs> okay. Okay. This one could be a product, or I could distribute and then add them together, right? Okay. Do I need to go through and do all that? Say no. Okay, how about this one right here for B? What does that mean? On the right side, yeah. Only the right side. Now, does this one have any restrictions that's going to, like, mess it up? No. That the left hand and the right hand are going to go to different things? No. No, they're not. This one doesn't have that. So I'm not, I don't have anything here in which that the left and right are going to change it up. So this one is just going to be what it is on the right-hand side. It's going to go to that number. Okay? So you could either distribute it or do what you want, or product. Again, piecewise. Find the limit as x approaches 2 if it exists. Let's see. Now, here's how we do it. Go through, plug in two for the first one. What do you get? Okay, so this, as x goes to two, it's gonna be seven, right? Okay, so now what side is this? Is this the left side or the right side? Left. So this is gonna be seven, where x is less than two. Two, okay, so it's going to seven. So that means that it's going to seven. That way, it's going to seven. Okay, now plug in two for the bottom one. What do you get? 
Four? Yeah. Four. Okay. So right here we get four. <laughs> so whichever direction it's going, right? So something like this. Okay. So the left side is going to seven. The right side is going to four. What's the tell me of the limit of the function now? Does not exist because both sides have to go to the same number, right? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So this one, limit does not exist. So write that out. D and E is fine for me now. Okay. I think D and E is allowed on the AP exam too. I can't remember. I'll have to look it up later on. When we do test prep, I'll, I'll clarify that. Okay. Find the limit power rule and the limit of a root. Okay. So it's basically if you have a power on the outside here, okay, find the limit of the inside and raise it to the power. So if the limit of f of x going to c is 2, just raise that to the power, okay? Raise that to whatever power you have out here, okay? Just find the limit of the inside and then raise that to the power. That's what that means, okay? Same thing for the root. If you see it like this. Okay, f of x is right there. So I could take the limit as x approaches c of f of x and then do the root. Okay, that's all it's saying. All right, nope, nope, nope. You guys got notes on that? <laughs> nope, got notes on that. Actually, hold on. Ah, you're fine. All right, same thing here. Now, fractional power, fractional power. The top of the fractional power. What is the top of the fractional power? If your exponent is a fraction, what is the top number? Power. The power. The denominator of that fraction is the? Very good. Top is the power. In this case, the m is the power. That m is the power and the n is the root. Okay, so if you see something nasty like this, you take the limit as x approaches c, and then you take it to the whatever exponent or three thirds or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's sad. Like that. Like what I come up with off the top of my head, I'm trying to you know, fraction three thirds, <laughs> three halves. There we go. Three halves. Oh, there's three halves. Hey, <laughs> hey, now. I know, right? Uh, <laughs> That's going to be a saying this year now. One fan. I know, my one fan. <laughs> All right, limit. So this one right here, what do we get? Nine. So I get 9 here on the inside. So I'm going to take 9, okay, so to the 3 over 2. So if I'm doing this mathematically, what's the easier part? Do I want to take it to the power first or to the root first? Root. What's the square root of 9? Three. 3. Now take that to the third power. Right? So it's 3 to the third, which is 27. Make sense? It's going to blow your mind, right? Wow, yeah. <laughs> okay. Are you, are, you, are you like serious? Or yeah, I am. I am. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm, it's I'm, easy. It's like it's yeah, not easy uh, for everybody. Andy. You're right. It's it, it's just working on it. Okay, it I'll know. I'll, I'm not sure. Like I don't know you yet, so I don't know if this is like sarcasm, or no, or like like knowing it makes sense. Just give it to all my computer power now. Gives you okay. anxiety. <laughs> Gives you anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're like yeah, I just there see where it's is going. somewhere. <laughs> there is somewhere where it's gonna stab me in the back. All right, final limit of a polynomial. So basically, just plug that number in. Plug in c into there. So p of x, just plug in c for your x value. That's what we have been doing, right? Yeah. Just plugging in that number for the variable. I could separate this and like find the limit of each one. Yeah. Or you could just plug in the numbers. It's easier just to okay, so that's going to be what? So that's 9, 9 36. Minus three. Thirty-five. <laughs> Thirty-three. Plus two. Thirty-five. Thirty-five. Okay. 
He, he's ahead of the game on this. He's ahead of Okay. <laughs> now, do I have to go through and do them all? No. Thank you. All right. So, find the limit of quotient. Same thing. If I have a quotient inside there, find the limit as x approaches c of this thing right here, and I have two parts of this, and I have a quotient, just find the limit of each. When I find the limit of each here, and then divide my answers. Just break them apart and then find my answers, right? Divide it out, find the answer. Okay? So, and for this one, why can't g equal zero? Because that would be undefined. Then. Undefined, right? Yeah. So it wouldn't work. Yeah. Okay? And then we're going to get into Lopatol's later on where it's zero over zero, but that's its own hot mess. Anyway. <laughs> okay. Average rate of change. Just slope formula, that's all it is. It's a fancy way to actually write slope formula. Delta Y over Delta X. So it's the difference of Y over the difference of X. Okay, exact same thing. Find the average rate of change of this. Okay, so now that gives me one of my problems that I have here, right? So we're gonna have this one. So this is gonna be your star. So guess what? <laughs> okay, find the different difference quotient here. So this is gonna be my different quotient, difference quotient. Okay. It's no big deal. All right. For this, find the differences, the difference quotient, there it is right there, okay? So what does it say to actually do here? What is it saying right here? This difference quotient is important. What is it saying to do with it? Okay, yeah, we're, fine. we're trying to actually get to this point. But this, I know it looks like a mess, but it's really not. What do I do with this first thing right here? The x plus h. You just plug it in there. Very good. So wherever there's an x, I put a plus h. x plus h, right? Okay, and that's going to be part of this first function, right? Yeah. Okay, and then it says minus the second function. So am I changing the, sec the second function? No. No, I put it is as is, right? And everything's going to be over h, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So do you know where this came from? No? All right. Let's 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 do a quick how to. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna look at a graph. Okay. I'm gonna say my graph is here to here, and this is going to be my x, and this is h. So this first point right here is gonna be what? Okay, x comma f of x, right? Okay, some point way over here is going to be, okay, so it's going to be h comma f of x plus h, right? Because I'm trying to get to this point here, but I don't know what h is. I don't know what H is, right? Mm -hmm. So when I figure out that, and so it's going to give me a change from here to here. So I'm going to go from one to the next here. So this is going to be my X plus H. So whatever I get there, so it's my X plus whichever space I have here, right? Yeah. Okay. So in my formula, my Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1, right? That's my basic slope formula, right? So it's gonna be y2 f of x plus h minus f of x over h minus, actually, uh, I got this one slightly off. Is this supposed to be, again, uh, x plus h on that one? And this one's going to be 
x plus h? No, it's backwards, backwards, yeah, backwards. Yeah, 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 yeah. that way you only have the h at the bottom. Yeah, it's backwards. Okay, so it's backwards, so it's going to be x plus h minus x. There we go. Okay, so I had it backwards there for a second. Okay, so this is just the slope formula. And because we have the function as it is approaching h, as it's going this way, and the difference between here to here, so this point, so if this is 5, right, and I move over two units, it would be 5 plus 2, right? So this would be 5 plus 2 once I actually get a value for that. And when I'm done with this, this goes away. So this and this, part of my difference quotient, leaves me with just my h. So as you're doing this, you're just trying to find the slope in between these two. And by just using it theoretically, just putting variables there, I'm able to actually come up with the difference quotient for this. Okay. Make sense? Kind of? Yes. Okay. All right. So that's just a little bit of background. You don't need to do that yourself. It's just, it, it, it's not some arbitrary thing. It's just slope formula. Okay. It's just slope formula. And we're using H to whatever it is approaching. And that's what I'm getting at. Okay. So here's another star. Okay. As you guys do this. Okay. All right. So you guys got those two problems for this. Don't forget, like and subscribe, right? Definitely. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>